Here I'm going to be showcasing some of the Scale 75 instant colors, skin tones, and how I use them in this paint job. Alright, before we start, we're going to have to put the model together. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to be using some Stano Res Gray to get the models primed up, ready to go. As soon as that's done, I'm using Wraith Bone to create a Zenithal Highlight. Next, using Instant Colors Fairy Blood, I'm going to be adding color to the shadows, because shadows aren't always black. Using another instant color, the zucchini skin, I'm going to be painting the orc skin. Alright, up next, using that zucchini skin mixed in with some yellow, I'm going to be working on the highlights of the orc. As you can see, I've been adding more and more yellow to that uh, zucchini skin mixture and it's helping really bring the contrast between those shadows and uh, the highlights of this orc. Alright, now using Lead Belcher, I'm going to be hitting all the metallic areas like the armor and the weapons and uh, that grenade that he's holding. Alright, next I'm using uh, an even brighter metallic on the opposite sides of the armor plates just to kind of create more contrast in those areas. Just so this paint process doesn't take forever, I'm going to be using the snake bite leather on the ropes and little accents like that all over the model.
Right here, I'll be using Space Wolf's Gray, the contrast color, to paint over all the metallic areas. Now I'm going back to that Fairy Blood instant color to reinforce those shadows on the face and the body. I feel like I didn't get enough of the purple. I probably could have just gone another um, round with the airbrush right there before I started painting it. So uh, it's no big issue. I just go back with that brush and go ahead and put it on those areas that I feel like need more of that purple color. Up next, I'm using a skin tone color to hit those wounds, those scratches and, and scars right there he has on his body. And then I'm going to go again with an even lighter skin tone and give that a highlight. Alright guys, I'm bringing in another instant color, Feather Phoenix. And with this color, I'm going to be going over the wound, and then I'm going to be going over the orc's elbow, knuckles, nose, ears, just to bring the realism to the orc's skin. You see a lot of artists use this method, and I actually end up really liking it. It looks really cool, and like I said, it does look more realistic. And the Feather Phoenix does a really good job of getting it done as far as the effect goes of realism. Because it is so thin, it's it's really like a glaze. It's out of the pot ready to go. So you don't have to mix it with anything or you don't have to water it down. It's, it's This is literally out of the pot. With the Feather Phoenix, I'm going to give it one extra coat going all the way around all the areas I just hit. And when I turn him around, you're going to see how much better he looks with that little bit of uh, blood going through his face and knuckles and, and all that, those uh, sensitive areas. To give that armor a more weathered look, I'm going to be giving this armor a little wash of that Nilec Oxide from GW. And what I like to do for the last step is of course the eyes. Something I do very often is use contrast paints. Since they're so highly pigmented and really runny, I feel like it's one of the easiest ways to really get that color pop into the eye socket real fast and with just one motion. All right guys, I want some last minute details on the teeth and face, and of course the basing, this model is complete. Let me know what y'all thought of how I use the instant colors and would y'all use them. Thanks for watching.